Hello friends, thanks for tuning in. Coming at you from Manhattan today, and I have a very special guest with me, a friend of mine, and one of my main mentors is uh, Dr. Emily Sloan. And it's really good to see you. Of course. How are you doing? Pleasure. I'm doing amazing. I love, love your you. office here, by the way. Oh, I haven't been here before. You. This thank is so you. cool. Um, I just have to say first, last week, that summit was off the charts cool. It's, uh, and I keep telling people all over, best conference ever. Oh, thank you. Think of the presenters who were there. Think of the, the, the people who attended and the energy in that room was absolutely amazing. It made it really easy to deliver information. Yeah. So receptive, so much knowledge. Bravo. Yeah. Thank yes. you. All Thank right. you. Yeah, I try to create like a this this symbiotic message mm -hmm. and energy that like we were saying on text, that it's it's my intention. I don't I don't kind of hey you guys stay connected, keep the energy, it just Happens, which is amazing, yep. um, but the message of the presenters, I choose them very specifically, and I knew that your work would be very well received. You as a presenter, it's very Thank nice. You. People respond very yeah. positively. So. I, had a, I had a great time. Yeah, it was fun. It was such a great energy from them. Everybody was great. Anyway, <laughs> so, I, so I, 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 we're supposed to be talking about success, and we are going to talk about success, but I met people this this place. So I met with Brian Marbella today, yep. right? and Simone. Mm -hmm. It's like the people who are in that room, we're surrounding the, we, we, ourselves with these people, yep. it just, it raises the bar every time. So I keep learning and learning and learning. So I would actually constitute or, or uh, consider this, it has to be part of the success that you realize is the people you're around, and then they're around you, yep. right? So. Let's officially start the subject, okay? <laughs> so, well, I started this because what I find when I travel, a lot of times um, people are they're asking, well, how did you get from this to that? You know, four years ago, you, you're just doing this and I do that. Well, I have my story, but there's so many people who helped me get there. You being the, the main person, because you opened the door for me for education, so thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I'm eternally grateful for that. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows it, because I've talked about it all my workshops. <laughs> um, but, so in your mind, though, I've always, I've actually never asked you this question, so I've been interested to hear the answer. How do you look at, define in your life, in your world, success, and what does it mean to you? And I'll let you take it from there. Okay, sure. So success now, at this point in my life, this point in my career, this age, perhaps, um, is very different than when I first started when I was younger. I think success back then was a little bit more associated with money, like money growth, kind of like a title. Um, and now it's much more of the fulfillment of what my message is and my mission, right? Yeah. So my mission of spreading, I guess, consciousness within healthcare yeah. and this integrated functional approach and think outside the box, preventive, um, owning your health. That that growth is a is a reflection of my success, right? So the more that I see the message being responded to, and things like the summit and how that brews this energy, and then the impact of those professionals that can have on all of their clients, so kind of this trickle down effect. That's that's what I'm chasing after, right? So success is that mission that keeps me motivated. So in my opinion, I suppose I would be successful from that, mm -hmm. but success is you know, continuously evolving and growing off of that mission. Oh, I love that, I love that. That's important too, right? Because I can't even believe how many times like my instructors are driving me crazy. Because I've changed the slideshow so many times, right? Yeah. But we're always going to, this is always new stuff. Yeah. We're always learning, always growing. We have a whole Novoso section now, of course. Yes. We're getting <laughs> such great results with those, which is a whole other story of success, but that is amazing. So that's really cool. So always learning, always growing. Um, so let's take where, where you were, where you're at now. There's been such a huge growth in uh, everything you're doing. And your reach, right? You've traveled a lot for many years, but your reach goes even deeper now. I, I think of your reach as selfless. Like the my message is selfless, 
right? It truly is the betterment of humanity, right? So yeah. if you if you're following or inspired by that versus let's say monetary or materialistic things, then the money just comes to you. Like it's an energy thing. Laws of attraction. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm, I'm totally the other way. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So I've never, knock on wood, had to like chase EBFA and Nabosos growth because it's always come from like this organic energy that I'm just putting out to honestly just help people. That's really what it is. And then as my companies grow, particularly Naboso, obviously I need money to help people. Right. So understanding the financial side to business or success on that side is critical to further getting your message out there. Yeah, the money drives the engine, like you can't it, it sustain does, without yeah. it. So you have to sustain and keep reinvesting, right? So I'm sure you're developing new products that I don't know about yet. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to hear Because <laughs> I know her, I know how she is, and I love her. No, that's really cool. Um, that, and that's a common theme. I find this with people I've been talking to, is talking with Andrew Wyant and some mu musician friends who are highly successful in yeah. you know, playing with Steely Dan and other people. And, uh, uh, but they have, a th the, what they're looking at is not themselves, it's usually, well, so far, I haven't talked to anyone who's about them. Right. And I actually won't talk to anyone <laughs> because you know when they're about them, but they're about the other people. Right, yeah. So, so you, want, you want to help humanity. Yeah, it's a more uh, genuine, kind of lasting impact. Almost like Chris Flo when he spoke about legacy, yeah. right? It's That's more true. like what is your legacy or what is the imprint that you will make on society, mm -hmm. which is what I think the further purpose of being human is, is making that impact. Yeah. And I have, I was given the gift of how I look at movement and the gift of every incident that happened in my life to lead to, let's say, the innovation of Naboso, mm -hmm. which means now I'm able to kind of carry that down. So that, that message or that bigger purpose was beyond myself. How did it also come about? Where did you come up with this idea? Uh, so teaching, traveling for EBFA, I would speak a lot on surfaces. And just say, okay, surfaces, we need the symbiotic relationship and the energy that we get from the earth with or the surface with every movement that we do. And then I'd say, these are ideal surfaces. These are surfaces that stimulate the nervous system and the skin on the bottom of the foot, yep. and I mentioned texture, because sure. <laughs> yeah. it's one of the, the nerves on the bottom of the feet. And then I started getting inquiries saying, okay, well you talk about texture a lot, but what texture, what surface? Can you give me an example? Like, is AstroTurf stimulating like that texture? Mm -hmm. is, yeah. um, right. Right. is a Dyna disc if I take the air out and I stand on, right? So then I started looking more and I was like, there's really not a surface that is truly stimulating the nerves in the bottom of the feet for the purpose of posture, gait, movement, brain stimulation, etc. Um, and that's really what led to it. So, so cool. Well, I, so I was teaching for you, UFA. Well, there were many times I came to your place in Hoboken. Uh -huh. We were doing work together. Yep. I remember you were um, developing the product, mm -hmm. and we were going through some frustrating times with getting the surface exactly, the, the, the material, yeah. the spacing of yeah. the bumps and the depth. Yeah. So yeah. it's been quite a R&D is but. not. R&D is expensive. Uh -huh. um, yeah. But, you know, I, I didn't know exactly what the end product would look like, yeah. where it was just like, okay, I want a surface, and then it's kind of exciting to see like some of the first prototypes, where what I was envisioning and where it is now, right. and um, kind of the material science that went into it, and then all of the tooling. So I've, I've learned a ton about like manufacturing <laughs> and, and China and factories oh and tools and logistical stuff. Um, but yeah, to, to get the specifications, and then this is the other thing is that I would try to be swayed by my engineer, by the factories that don't understand the underlying, yeah. say, purpose or goal, and say, oh, well, couldn't we do this? And I was like, if the durometer is not this, 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 I cannot, I cannot put a product out there that is not, not going to have the impact of, of what I know it can. 
and you see the results, but because I'm so specific on the drama, the, the shape of the texture, the distance of the texture, and even now sometimes my factory will, will say, can't we, and I'm like, no. Like, morally or into my bones, I cannot put a product out there that is not going to help people the way I know it can. Well, I'm glad about that, because you know, I've been in Mexico a lot. Well, I've been around a lot, so but it just so happens that I've spent so much time in Mexico, and I've used this so much there and everywhere I go. But I've just had access to more people with Parkinson's in that country than anywhere yeah. else. And yeah. It is complete game changer. It blows people's minds. I mean, it's like the best thing in the world. So please don't change it. <laughs> I won't. I won't. Yeah. But the fact we know, no change is got to no freaking no, way. No shortcuts. No. Um, it's but, working. People's lives are changing. People are running now. They haven't right. run in 15 years, and now they're getting a sense of smell back. So the best I can say is maybe they've got some new cell development in the olfactory bulb, yeah. which, according to Wendy Suzuki at NYU, that can happen when you start to do cardio every day you know, yeah. for a few weeks. I don't know. I can't say for sure. I don't have brain imaging or anything like that. But when half of the people say they're starting to smell better, Make sure want to like, do a little research yeah, on that. That's super cool. It's just yeah. the best thing in the world. So to have that impact kind of tying in success is that definitely keeps me motivated to keep. Well, one of the things I love, I'll be somewhere and I'm like, oh yeah, this person, this is such a huge difference. I put together a side by side video, send it to Emily. <laughs> And then you're somewhere in the world and you're getting it like, oh my god. No, but, and then I hold no. it to my board and yeah. to my investors. And yeah. I mean, I make them cry. I, mean, I cry. I cry a lot of times. Yeah. I cry a lot of times. I get very emotional about it because, because the people get emotional. Yeah. See, so what, what's happening is, um, this is in my world. Here's what happens. You get a person who comes in and they're feeling defeated by Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. Hopeless a lot of times. Depressed, number one non motor symptom, right? And it doesn't have any Parkinson's, it could be anything, it could be any bad balance, you know, other syndromes, other diseases. But bottom line is they're not moving well. Mm -hmm. They're usually not feeling as well as they used to. So and mentally emotionally. So all of a sudden you put this in, you feel more secure, more stable, more coordinated, and we just see things that we see this amazing uh, progression or um, change and improvement in movements and what happens then is this changes mm -hmm. right? this changes and then the people around them are affected mm -hmm. so this is a ripple effect yeah. it's, it's a big deal yeah you're yeah, doing a really good job changing inspiring. the world i have to say this thank you <laughs> your education I, I miss teaching it a lot we have to talk about that yeah. and um it, so that message of the in and of itself is so great can't wait to hear the new stuff in arizona and then uh, the Nervosa stuff, and then whatever else you're going to do, I can't wait to see what it is. <laughs> so cool. So, what, so let's do this. I'm going a little out of order from what I usually do, but what do you have? Let's say you have uh, uh, some educators out there or movement professionals who are just working with people, physios, personal trainers. Um, do you have any advice for them? Around built around the subject of success because a lot of them are they're uh, they're stuck they're like a yeah. and they don't they're not seeing they're not realizing what they want. Yeah, um, I mean I would say the biggest thing that might be a little bit cliche, so I don't know if some of your other interviewers spoke about it, but uh, the mindset of things is huge. Uh, and if you haven't heard that, just you really have to believe that it is. A mental game, right? So, yeah. success and big business, any of the either the athletes or the business or musician, wherever you are, who you consider like successful that you look up to, I think a lot of that is linked to the mind game, the mindset. And what I would say is having a very clear goal of what you want. So, for those who are listening and are wanting to achieve X, Y, or Z, is writing down those goals, envisioning those goals, seeing yourself in those goals or in that in that level, almost like meditating on it, yeah. because the act of visualization is huge. And then starting your day, every single day, in the right mindset. And something that I've done that I think accredits a lot of the, the mind side of things is every single morning for the past three, maybe even four years, I listen to 30 to 60 minutes of 
Tony Robbins is one of my favorite. Mm, but yeah, like a morning, like a morning ass kicking. <laughs> so, and why you want to do it in the morning, not just because that's when you're starting your day, is that when you just get out of sleep, your brain waves are still under the susceptible uh, pattern, right? Yeah, right exactly. So, what you what you do in the morning is the most important thing to like set the tone, to get you like you know this own day, yeah. right? Um, and a lot of like when I was traveling, and I would be out of the country a month at a time. Where you you're not with family, you're not with friends. I'm in countries where no one except my translator speaks English, and it can be really lonely and isolating. And and then you're like teaching all day, giving 100% of yourself, yes. and then you go back to the hotel and you're just like, oh, yeah. but then you're alone, <laughs> like yeah. that, right? Yeah. Um, in the beginning, when I first started doing it six years ago, I had to like there would be days halfway into it. And just be like, oh, there are 20 more days of literally lecturing. But I have to be like, come on, Emily, <laughs> like, put like write things on the mirror and like lipstick or something, just saying like, get it, own your day, whatever the motivation is. Yeah. Because you you literally have to like, okay, each day you be like re-inspired, just like you were on day one of the tour versus day 30 of the tour. Yeah. Um, so that's why I started seeing that what I did in the morning. And now, technically, I don't have to listen to them anymore. I will still, I'm now like, alarm goes off, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm ready, right? Yeah. Yeah. But that's because I've done so many days of the repetition of, that's how I start my day, that's how I start my day. And, you know, there will be good days, there will be bad days. And you can't let the bad days, or the down days, or the rejection, excuse me, days, prevent you from, you know, whatever your goal is. I think rejection is a big fear of people, and then when they're actually rejected, they allow that to pretty much define their direction, and that's a lot of times that just leads down the other path that is the opposite of success. I mean, you're not failing, but you're not moving forward. Man, I mean, you're, you're limiting yourself, which I did for years as a yeah, musician, right? Yeah. I was rejected so many times. Yeah. Like, hate mail <laughs> from <laughs> podiatry. Like, literally oh, things man. that could, yeah. people who, um, you know, doubt what you say, or, you know, there's just a lot of that, and you have to, if you know that you're right, or like your education, you know what you're delivering is good. So if anyone challenges you on your education, and what you speak of with Parkinson's and the progressions of your programming, and you know it's right, think of it like they, they haven't seen the light yet. <laughs> it's not their fault, they haven't seen the light yet, and if you know, what you know and into your soul that is right, you just have to keep pushing. You know, it's interesting because I had, um, my normal life basically was the I'm not good enough kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, even when I s started teaching, and it was for <laughs> you never knew this, but I faked it. I faked it. I practiced every day before that first workshop. I'm out to my imaginary audience and my yeah. back porch, yeah. and I'm like, but, but, who came to that workshop is that my friend Eric Prager, who used to be my trainer, who's an awesome trainer. Mm -hmm. And he came to the workshop and I was scared to death, mainly because you were there, Eric. <laughs> and so, but he also told me, he says, that is really good. You know stuff that other people just don't know. He says, you know, people look at you as an authority when you're teaching, whether you really are an authority or not. Uh -huh. He says, you know, you actually deserve to be teaching this because you taught it so well. I mean, uh -huh. I thought I could do that well, but... Uh -huh. but that kind of shifted. I never said thank you to Eric for that, but thank you because it shifted like almost like, you know what? Not, not at that moment, but over time. Well, you asked me to speak at the summit, which I'm grateful for, but I felt good. I'm okay with that. I, not my ego. I deserve to do this. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's a healthy self respect is what it is. And I've done the research, and I know that what I have is going to fit the mm -hmm. program of the, the summit. And, that is something with clients too. This is not about me and this is about you, but I can resonate though, like thinking about the rejection or the not good enough thing. I don't know if you ever had that in your life, but mm -hmm. I did. Uh, we've all had things that would hold us back. Mm -hmm. It's just, you deserve to be there. You, if you know the stuff, yep. even if you have the people who think you're wrong, but you know you're right, yeah, exactly. then you just deserve to just go teach it or treat people that way or whatever, because it's, if it's working. Yeah, yeah, the self-doubt, is probably, 
probably what inhibits a lot of people from success is not others, it's obviously ourselves. Oh, it's so the self-doubt, if it's unwarranted, meaning that you do know everything, you are qualified, etc., then you have to get out of your own way. And if you can't or you're having a hard time with that, then seeking help, right? So I knew you spoke to Brian. So going into the, uh, yeah, sure going into the, that was the, an hour the consciousness, like that. yeah, he's very into subconscious oh my gosh, stuff. Was so good. Yeah, so, but it's true. And I've done Psyche, a lot of NLP, Psych K. Uh, yeah. yeah, but Psych K, NLP, any of those is it's changing your beliefs, yeah. right? So if you have a belief for whatever reason of where that imprint was made, yeah. that you don't deserve this, or you're not good yeah. enough, or you know. You're, you're not smart enough, whatever that belief is, it will subconsciously be carried throughout. Totally. So change it, you have to change it. Yeah, and he, actually, I remember Ryan was saying the other day that what you choose to believe is actually a decision. It is. Even if you're not conscious of belief, um, that you decided to believe something, if you just think that it just is that way, and I never chose to believe it, you actually did at some level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. subconsciously. Okay. Yeah, subconsciously, yeah. Mm -hmm. And actually, the subconscious is so powerful, right? So now we need to take control over that, like Tony Robbins on the other side, and mm -hmm. start driving home the truth mm -hmm. or what you want to believe. Mm -hmm. You know, I look at so many people who uh, do go through self doubt, and I can I can empathize and relate. But if you, if you say why me, how about why not me? Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, right? Mm -hmm. Why not? Yeah, it's you. You have to kind of stop, turn, look yourself in the mirror, which is a very vulnerable thing. Yeah. If you're if you keep saying like not me, not me, not me, I don't deserve it, and you're scared to actually like look at yourself in the mirror because of you know what you might see. That's that's going. You're just continuing down that way, right? So maybe maybe the individual isn't ready yet, and all they can do is keep listening to to interviews like what we're doing, or Tony Robbins, or Bruce Lipton, any of them. Yeah. And when they are ready, subconsciously, consciously, then they will proceed. Right, like you can't. That is so true. What do they say? The I think it's a Jim Rohn thing when the student's ready to teach a little peer. I mean, that's one way to look yeah, at it. Yeah. It's not exactly the same thing. It is. But there is a thing about being ready and yes. like being able to accept yourself. Like, oh, wait a minute. Right. I can do this. Yeah. Um, it's so powerful. It's, I don't know. I, I, the people I talked with, I've talked with so far, you and Andrew and uh, a handful of others, what I see is you've taken your passion, and you know your stuff, and you know it really, really well. You put it together into a package where you go and you're educating people, you're training people to educate people. And when you're that knowledgeable and that system together, and you can deliver stuff that does change lives, you know, why not you, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. And I think anybody can do this. And if, whatever it is your goal is, you said just do your homework, know your stuff. Yeah, and it, it doesn't have to be what. Like teaching, like what we're doing. No, not at all. You could do it on a one to one client level Absolutely. and be making a huge impact. And well, that is successful because that's what your calling is. I would say the other thing about success is knowing what your calling is and your gut yeah. or your intuition, mm -hmm. it, it always knows, right? So if you, if you choose a career path because you're trying to please your parents <laughs> or something like that, right? Then you will always subconsciously on some level. Um, either resent them for it, be unhappy, feel like what a what a shoulda type thing, versus like you know what I just need to do you know follow my gut and my intuition of what my calling is. Actually, a lot of people in fitness do that, like second career. Yeah. People think yours is yeah, story like that, yeah. right? Yeah. So then you will go into that career with passion that is unlike. Yeah other people that are doing it because they think they can make a lot of money training or, or whatnot. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, you can do it wherever you're at with whatever you're doing. You, you can take this approach, right? Yeah. And, um, and, and you know, like Andrew says, that you, you, care, well, you care about the people you're working with, your patient just left. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you care about that person. Mm -hmm. And 
as long as people know that we care too, that can help our success a lot, right? Well, they can, they can tell like a genuine yeah. care or a self-motivated uh, attitude or, you know what there's I mean? There's a clear, distinct difference that even though the words could be the same, yeah. there's some, we, we pick up on a real deal versus the fake. Yeah, deal. and the, the delivery of a how, let's say if you're teaching or you're at a conference, like you'll just gravitate to those that are genuine in their delivery. Yeah. So what can we expect from Naboso and EBFA in the future? So uh, through Naboso, we have these different licensing agreements yes. that we're working on. And that's really exciting. That's part of why developing Naboso yeah. was not just we have our little products, but we can license the material to other companies that they can help us spread this barefoot science message, um, and it can just make a further impact throughout throughout humanity. Um, and then I have several book offers that I am working on. Um, three different uh, book offers related to a lot of this biocycle social that I'm doing. Uh, some related to functional medicine with the podiatry. And then something that's on my bucket list is further getting functional medicine, biopsychosocial, again, it's just integrative, yeah. right, uh, with a podiatry. So how can I further impact my kind of parent industry, my parent um, education in a way that is kind of enlightened, yeah. <laughs> in a yeah. sense? So. If I can start like a association or some sort of society within you know global podiatry about functional medicine, right. that would be like the next like can I get the next generation of podiatrists all around the world thinking of emotion, autonomic nervous system, breathing, um, yeah, foot core, fascia, right? All of that stuff. That's that's really you know how how else can I make my impact? I think that's amazing. I mean, I think like so you're pioneering this thing, and you're. I I, I see this happening for you totally because I, what I, you know, the people who know about you now versus five years ago, there are way more of them. Mm -hmm. And then with with uh, Nivoso product coming out, I think that's such a huge thing because we're start we're seeing. I'm not the only one, obviously, either, but I have a lot of people who've realized great uh, results. Improvements of movement, but mm -hmm. but the others who are picking up on this, I just mm -hmm. really hope for you, and I know for you that it's going to spread out, and and eventually it has to just become the norm, the mainstream. It's like yeah. uh, in the bios, the way you finish the conference at the summit, that was like the best way to finish. Yeah, yeah, that's that is so. Okay, do you want to talk just a little bit about that? Yeah. So my outside of feet <laughs> and barefoot and functional movement side of things is a huge passion of mine is brain, emotion, um, this biopsychosocial concept, which is how we are imprinted and how that imprinting happens in utero, right? And a lot of the stuff that we were saying about beliefs yes. is based off of our first, first experiences. So, if we are, you know, our parents or our birth is traumatic, how that carries into our belief system and our perception of the world and our experiences in the world and how that can contribute to movement dysfunction or your relationship with your movement dysfunction, right? So if your relationship is a little bit different than someone else, let's say you're very um, anxious about it or depressed about it, that then changes your breathing pattern, right? Your sensitivity to pain goes up when you are anxious. So, which again is partly linked to breathing and baroreceptors in the body, but the neurohormonal side of stress, anxiety, what it does to the immune system, to pain receptors, to breathing patterns, to et cetera, it just, to cancer risks, I mean, it's just, this huge trickle down effect that you can see a lot of it around, um, you know, immunology, um, success, addiction, 
but to carry it into like movement dysfunction that hasn't been done yet. So that, yeah. that's why I want to try to get this philosophy into physical therapy, chiropractic, orthopedic, podiatry, Western medicine, musculoskeletal yeah. approaches, because it's not not appreciated. No, and it should be. In my and it should be. Okay. And it's huge. You know the yeah. thing about C sections? I didn't know that. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. And about half of births here in the United States are C-section. Yeah. There are a lot more scheduled yeah. places to be in. And, and yeah, so you lose so help by going yeah. that route as a baby yeah. coming out that way. Yep. Right. So what is perceived as convenient, mm -hmm. right? Like this is convenient, not what is that doing to your child, yeah. but what is that also doing to female empowerment? Not, and this is in no way a feminist thing. It is just a female what happens during the process of giving birth from a hormone perspective and then from an attachment perspective with your child which leads to better parenting yeah. and how the child feels that i mean this is like generational <laughs> yeah right it's, it's so it's huge but that that part a lot of things blew my mind that weekend if that was one of my like, i just had no clue yeah it makes sense you know going through now, the birth canal, that whole yeah. experience and what that, yeah. all the benefits of that. Yeah. I, I did not know that. That's huge. The, um, there is uh, an author and educator, his name is Dr. Gabor Mate. I had mentioned him, I don't know if you picked it up. Um, but Gabor Mate, M A T E, mm -hmm. um, he's Canadian and he really looks at this biopsychosocial and birth experience imprinting that set intrauterine uh, on addiction. Wow. Right, so he, he's yeah, applying it down that. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. He, he applies it down that. But I would encourage everyone, even if you're like, why well, don't deal with um, babies <laughs> or, or women who are pregnant yeah. or I'm not planning to have a child myself or I'm a male or whatever, whatever it might be, Every single human being, what we have that's the common denominator is yeah. we're all born, yeah. right? We obviously will all die. But how we enter this world is so powerfully impactful. I just finished a book that's called Pre Pre Parenting, and it's all about perinatal development, so all intrauterine development oh. for everyone, not related to children, but for to human development to see like oh, the age that your immune system develops and then how on your cells your each cell in the body has a receptor for a virus right? and that's how you get an infection say flu or something and then the same receptor on that cell that the virus goes in is also linked to a neurohormone thinking like dopamine um, norepinephrine, so things like feel-good hormones. So if you are happy, positive attitude, you don't mean in a healthy way, right, is high, all of those receptors on the cell are filled with dopamine, let's say, so a feel-good hormone, neurohormone, that the virus can't get in because every receptor is taken. Oh, okay. Right? So if you are depressed or stressed, all of those receptors or a lot of those receptors are available so the virus can get in. I mean, to me, that's fascinating mm -hmm. that, that, that there's science to, okay, if you are like stressed and depressed, you're sicker. I mean, that's just like straight up, people know that, right? Where it's just like, how's that person like never sick? And then I have like, I know colleagues and, and such who are just always sick. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. okay, pause it. Why are, you, why are you continuously sick? I actually went through that. I was talking with Perry about because we both sick for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And, this yeah. And, that. and I, I know the stress and lack of uh well, let's see. My stress management skills weren't the best. <laughs> not to call you out <laughs> But I'm I'm learning. I mean it's true. No, they they're not the best they weren't the best. I'm good when much better. But they weren't not much better though. Okay. Much, much better. I started yeah. doing the grounding thing. Okay, good. For good. the jet lag deal. Yes. It helps a yes. lot. Yeah. Uh airplanes the amount of inflammation, dehydration, radiation on an airplane is massive. So if you're taking, I was just on a 23-hour flight from Singapore to here, yeah. and just thinking of if you travel a lot, you, you know, I'm traveling to spread my message, but at that same time, I'm putting myself at risk. Yeah, same thing totally. with you. Yeah. So the only way that you can carry your message to help other people, you have to help yourself first. Yeah. 
right? So, I mean, I have a crazy regimen of what I do on plates <laughs> to, to keep myself hydrated, to address all the oxidative stress that is happening on the plane. Yeah. And when I get into the country, grounding, like what you're saying, how that equilibrates your circadian rhythm, just, you know, in the beginning, when, six years ago when I first started doing it, I would like fall off of my regimen. I would just like, the, the time difference, I would just somehow just stop all of my vitamins. I have no idea why, I'd bring them with me. And then I would just like, no. I so can too. I <laughs> right? yeah, okay. And you're just like, because there's, yeah. there's a deeper motivation thing that you also have to, when you're tired, you're jet lagged, all of that, your motivation in the brain gets affected. So now you have to supersede that through yeah, it does. the habits of your consciousness yeah. to just like like take those vitamins, <laughs> Emily, <laughs> whatever it is. And if you think twice about something, then you're not going to do it. So it's just like go vitamin take. Like if you <laughs> if any thought crosses your mind of like, well, you're not going to take that. Yeah, it's true. Right? It's so true. Yeah, it's so true. Yeah, I think that's something that gets left out a lot too. Um, I don't know if it's more in the educator business, but certainly in the educator business is taking care of ourselves. Because like I talk with my instructors, so this is really new, new for me to have instructors, but what people will discover is you don't get a break. From the moment you walk in the door, if there's a person there, or you're first, but the first person in, they want your time and your attention because they're glad you're there. And they, they're excited and breaks, lunches, unless you schedule time. I have a wait time sometimes. I'll just go hide somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have to yeah. for recovery. Yeah, like 100%. Or, but other than that, man, and, and you have to be on, right? So what, what what would happen to me is I get back to the hotel, done. Yeah. Because I'm not going to go work out, you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. Even though it's the first thing I should do just to take care of myself or well, maybe not work out, do something for yeah. my health. But I would let it go. And then I guess I yeah, and if you, I mean, perhaps if you, especially if you're, there's a time difference, when you get back or if you're exhausted, then say, okay, I'm just going to veg tonight, but let me wake up a little bit earlier when, after the rest, right? You might be a little bit more motivated. And the other thing that I started doing internationally, because you go, let's say I'm away from like a month, people are hosting you, and they're amazing hosts in other countries. And I'm so grateful for them, but they want to like take you up, they want to entertain you, oh, yes. and in the beginning okay. you would do that because you you are you know, building a relationship, yeah, right? Yeah. Exactly. And then now, six years into it, I'm just like, nope, sorry. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm like, I will do one one of the you know three nights that I'm there. We'll do dinner, mm -hmm. right? Because I, I do want to spend time with you, but the other ones just out of respect for myself and how I need this time because I have 20 other days on the road, yeah. you have to honor that and yes. not feel guilty that you are taking your time and just say, listen, I scheduled in. When I'm here, I, my way of relaxing is I love room service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And I just yeah. like, I watch certain shows, but I take a, you know, I go to the spa a lot, but I do things that are just like Emily time. Yeah. Kind of like what you said, yeah, and, yeah. and I started telling these folks, like, I will do one night, nice dinner, yeah. rest, sorry, don't take it personally. Uh, I'll, I'll say this, don't take it personally with my friends in Mexico, but I can't eat too many more tacos. <laughs> <laughs> Even though they're the best in the world, because that, actually, that, that was happening to me. I mean, it, the country, it's interesting how internationally we are received. And there's so much gratitude and appreciation and respect, and it's almost surreal. Like, why? But I, lo I, I appreciate that greatly. Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> you do have to watch your energy and your food. I mean, yeah. It's so easy to just go off and eat like some of the best food in the world and way too much of it. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. and seeing seeing the sights and you know people yeah. people are just like, oh, you're in like all these countries, don't you like? stay extra to see the, and I'm like, I would never be home. Yeah. Like, yeah. you go from country to country, I, I would love to, like, do the tourist thing, but I also have to think of oh, you have a business my well. business, my practice, and, yeah. you know, you do, you do you when you travel. Well, it's interesting. So, I mean, we've talked about a lot of things, but when it comes down to it, though, the fact that you have a system for these things, 
also helps you to realize greater success and accomplishing your goal, your mission to help humanity, right? Because if you don't help yourself, you're not going to help as many people. Mm -hmm. So, in, in my opinion, everything we talked about, even we went off on a lot of things, which I love, it all, it's all related because everything's connected. Everything we do in our life is connected to everything else and how effectively we get that message out there. So, it's so cool. I love everything you're doing. Thank you. You know, I think you're awesome. Thank you. You're the best. Thank you. And any any last words of wisdom or advice you want to give to anybody? Um, yeah, I would say just really find what your true calling is. And I think everyone who may be in a position that they're not totally happy, maybe they're exploring fitness or movement or healthcare, is Deep down you know, like even though you, it's kind of crossing your mind, you know what your calling is and, and what your, your end picture is. Have that be the constant reminder. Envision it, meditate to it, take action literally every single day about what that goal is and you will achieve it. I think it's great. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Weekend is not, you know, go on holiday for two days and like mentally disconnect from whatever your vision uh, is. Well, Every day I think about Naboso. Yeah. Probably because I have to because people are like constantly. Yeah, true, but still it's, I, I can relate to that. Every day, every day I do what I need to and say, I have to think about this every day. And plan and, and get ideas and I talk yeah. to people, learn stuff, make more ideas and I get excited. But that's, that comes back to the passion too, right? I was just going to so say, now, not I, in a work way, but a passion. It is, I feel like I don't even really have a job sometimes. You know, I mean, there's some administrative sides. I'm, I'm not at the level of, you know, you're at or some other people out there, but still, the growing, it's growing quickly, and I'm starting to realize, whoa. <laughs> so some of that's a pain in the neck, but when it comes down to the work end of it, the actual being with people or delivering, mm -hmm. that's not a job. Mm -hmm. It takes energy, don't get me wrong, but it's not a job, it's a passion. I love it, I love it so much. So um, people can find you if you can give us a website. I'll put links on the screen, but it's ebfafitness.com yes. for the EBFA yep. workshops and information. NervosaTechnology.com. Yes. Uh, my practice is uh, drmlyspickle.com, so Dr. Emily Spickle. Ah, cool. And then I'm on every social network under Naboso, Dr. Emily, and the EBFA. So Naboso is N-A-B-O-S-O technology.com. I have a quick story to tell you. I was uh, in an airport recently, and a lady was standing next to me, and she, we just started talking, because I talked to people. I said, where are you from? She says, Czechoslovakia. I said, I have a quiz. Do you know the, bear, the word for barefoot in Czechoslovakia? And she says, Naboso. <laughs> so I opened up my bag, and I, like, I opened up the bag, and right? I'm like, here. Look at this. She's like, oh my god, what are these? And then she bought a pair. It was like, oh, it was the awesome. best thing. Yeah. That's hilarious. She was going back to Czechoslovakia, and uh, her son is wearing them. It's one of the sports she's doing. She said, you know, she says he loves them. Oh, that's all so cool. and all that. So that's, that's my quick story of the day. Novoso in Czech means barefoot. <laughs> so cool. I mean, that was on purpose. I know it was. Oh, I, know, I know it was on purpose. <laughs> okay. Yes. So I've had people say, do you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, you've got to check it out, folks. If you haven't checked out the most, you must do it. I've never seen anything like it. And uh, I say this all over the world, that's just because I'm with the creator here. No, seriously, it's the most of but people who have used them, and especially in Mexico, that's where I spend most of my time with this. We know, right? We know. So you have to check it out and order some. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Awesome. All Thank right. You. Always great to see you. Thank you. Um, you know where to check out her website. So we'll have links on the screen. Thank you very much. And thanks for watching.